Okay, so in this problem we're given the uh, velocity curves for two cars, car A and car B. You have to answer three or four questions about this. The first question asks how far car A has traveled after 16 seconds. And car A is denoted by this sort of purplish uh, curve here. Um, we have to remember that the area under a velocity curve represents the total distance traveled. So at 16 seconds, we're sort of right here. And if we cut it off at 16, then we can notice that up until 16, we have sort of two distinct geometric shapes here. We've got a rectangle bounded by those ones that I just put, and then we've got this triangular shape here as the other one. Okay, so the total area under this curve will represent the distance traveled. So we're looking for this integral from 0 to 16 for that uh, car A function. That's really what we're after here, area under the curve. I guess we'll call the purple one um, f of x. So that's really what we're after there. Um, so if you notice, the, the triangle will have area 1 half the base times the height. So the base is 8. And the height is, uh, what is that, 48 it looks like. And so that's the area of the triangular part. And then the rectangular part as well. That has base 8. And that has height uh, 48 as well. And that's just base times height since it's a rectangle. So we put these together, get 576. So that represents the distance that car A has traveled in the first 16 seconds. The units on that would be uh, feet, since it's feet per second. So 576 feet traveled in the first 16 seconds. Part B asks us, when uh, is car A the farthest ahead of car B? And so if we would just remember that the distance traveled represents or is represented by the area under the curve, if you look, um, car A is going to be ahead of car B uh, up until we reach 16 seconds. And so for that entire time, car A is going faster than car B, meaning it's going to be um, ahead. And then once we reach 16 seconds, then car B is velocity becomes faster than car A and so then they, car B starts catching up. So when does when is car A the farthest ahead of car B? That occurs at 16 seconds right there where the intersection point is. After that point of intersection car B will start catching up to car A. So to answer the question, 16 seconds. So for part C it says to estimate the farthest that car A gets ahead of car B. For car A, use midpoint, use formulas for geometry. For car B, use n equals 4 and the value of the function at the midpoint of each interval. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you that you don't actually have to follow those instructions on here. It will work fine if you use only two subintervals for part for car B. And so what we can do is notice that um, if we go from 0 to 8 and we just sort of put, look at the output of car B at that point, uh, time 8 it would be right there and then if you just notice that can really be pretty well approximated by a right triangle right there okay and again this is just an approximation so this is going to be fine for us and then notice again that you can start from 8 and go to 16 the point where car A uh, is, as, is as far ahead as, as it's going to get for car B if you notice that you can also just approximate this part with a straight line right there and then if you sort of drop that down that produces a trapezoid and so if we can find the area these two areas here area one and area two and add them together that will be a good indication of how far car uh, B has gone during those first 16 seconds 
And so we've already figured out how far car A had traveled in those first 16 seconds, and then we'll just subtract. Okay, so let's take a look at these two areas. Area one is a right triangle with base eight, so one half the base times the height. The base is eight, and the height is, let's call it about, let's see, that's 16 right there, that's 18. About 18, I think, is fine. Let's use 18. This question is going to have more leeway on what it counts as a correct answer. So again, I'm looking right here at the height. Uh, right there is about 18. And that seems to be the top of that rectangle, or sorry, the triangle for a A1 there. Okay, then A2 is a trapezoid. And the formula for the area of a trapezoid is the... Uh, it's the average of the two bases, and so this one actually has one base that's this high, which would be 48. It's kind of a sideways trapezoid, so we're calling that the, one of the bases. And then this would be the other one, and then we said that's about 18, so we'll use that as well. And then this width right here is 8. Okay. And so the formula for that, um, for the area of a trapezoid, is 1 half the base 1 plus base 2, so 18 plus 48, and then multiplied by the height, which in this case, again, if it's turned on its side, the height is 8. kind of looks like the width here, but this will work. Okay, so that's going to give us 264. And for that first one, 72. And so the total area, area 1 plus area 2, 72 plus 264 is 336. So that's a pretty decent approximation for how far car A went during that sorry, car B went during that first 16 seconds. And then if we go back to um, the other one, what was, uh, it was 576 feet for that one. So that was the answer to part A there, 576 feet. And so how, what is the difference between these two? 576 minus 336 is 240. So the farthest that it gets ahead, that car um, A gets in front of car B is 240 feet. Okay, so part D is asking us to find the, uh, give a rough estimate for when car B will catch up with car A. Okay, so um, if we kind of got the gist of what was happening in the first three parts, this area right here that's sort of above the blue car curve and below the pink car curve, all of that area kind of represents how much ahead car A is than car B, this area right here. And so once car B passes car A, what we're trying to look for is where, which T value down here do we need to kind of stop at, starting here at 16, so that the area here is going to match the area uh, that would be bounded by where we stop here, okay, like by a t-value down here, okay. So, and we can kind of do a process of elimination here. Um, we've already established that car A is ahead of car B until time t equals 16. After that point, car B then starts uh, catching up to car A. So clearly we can toss out answer B here because between 12 and 16 seconds, uh, car B A is what is still ahead of car B, okay. And then between 16 and 20 seconds, that would mean that we'd be stopping at 20 and just kind of looking at this small triangle right here. And if we remember what I was just saying here, um, we we're trying to look for the stopping point for the t-value where this area would kind of match the size of that area right there. This is clearly too small. That triangle is definitely not as big as that area that I shaded in earlier. So we can toss that answer too. And then the last two choices here are... It says give a rough estimate. It says choose the best estimate, okay? Now between t equals 20 and t equals 32, that's a really wide estimate. That's from all the way from here to here. 
And so it gives a pretty small area as its smallest possible bound, and then a really big area for its biggest one, that would be like all of this, all the way out to here. So that's not really a very good uh, estimate, such a having such a large swing. So between t equals 24 and t equals 28 would mean, if suppose that we stop at 24, we start here, stop at 24. Then we're looking at a triangle that's roughly that size. And then if we stop at 28 instead, then we would be going up to a triangle that big. And so it seems like the area here is kind of somewhere between the area of that smaller possible triangle stopping at 24 and then the bigger possible triangle that stops at 28. So I think that is the most reasonable answer. So D it is for this one.